Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Yee, a career counselor at Citrus College. Welcome to Career Chats. So in this episode, we're going to talk about a trending topic lately called toxic positivity and how it affects work and career decision making. So how many times have you heard positive vibes only or words like that posted on social media or one of those signs you can buy in a cute gift shop as a reminder to push the negative thoughts out of your mind and look on the bright side? You know, hustle harder, good vibes only. Girl, you got this. Sometimes words of encouragement are not so helpful. As a career counselor, I've been reading several articles about how toxic positivity has fed into a culture of go and the damage it's doing. So I teach a class about managing stress and anxiety, and my area of interest is performance and positive psychology. And I'll be the first to tell you that while there are so many benefits to living a life with gratitude, with a gratitude mindset, approaching life with a you know positive vibes only mentality can actually be harmful. Sounds a bit backwards, doesn't it? So I say this because while optimism and forward thinking are useful tools in life, we just simply can't always be happy. However, many feel that they have to be all the time, and that's the issue. So before we get into the philosophy of this more, let's define what po toxic positivity is so we're clear. So toxic positivity refers to when we minimize and neglect the entirety of the human experience when it comes to emotions and what we give ourselves permission to feel. In other words, Toxic positivity prioritizes happiness over all else, including negative emotions. A workplace with this mentality can't succeed unless it learns to embrace the bittersweet aspects of life. And I think this can even apply to our home life, interpersonal and professional relationships, and family life as well. And toxic positivity assumes that a positive mindset is the only mindset because by ignoring difficult and negative emotions, we think we'll be happier. So in everyday life, it might appear as, you know, when someone is feeling down and people are going to just want to dive in and make them feel better and cheerlead them out of it. A mental health and suicide prevention speaker, Ann Moss Rogers, said what that actually does is it invalidates someone's feelings to begin with. Now, per one of my favorite career resources, Career Contessa, this type of thinking leads to invalidation of the human experience because when we try to override or reject existing negative and unpleasant emotions because they're seen as inherently bad, what we're doing is we are overcompensating by focusing excessively on positivity and the overgeneralization of happiness, causing a more inauthentic human emotional experience for ourselves. So while suppressing negative emotions and focusing only on the positive in theory sounds good, humans are actually meant to experience emotions, all of them from happiness to sadness to anger, even jealousy. As humans, we're made to experience and feel things across a broad spectrum. So in addition to invalidating emotions, this type of toxic behavior attaches shame to struggle. And when you express a negative emotion to someone, and then they meet your sadness or frustration with that you know, positive vibe mentality, that person's initial reaction might be just to feel annoyed and not seen. So there's numerous psychological studies that have shown that suppressing emotion can also lead to increased stress. In fact, Susan Cain, a New York best-selling author of Bittersweet, How Sorrow and Longing Makes Us Whole, discusses why toxic positivity is so prevalent, how to prevent it in the workplace, and how to eliminate it. She says that one of the biggest negative emotions of toxic positivity is burnout, which is exacerbated by emotional labor. She defines this as that feeling that you're obligated to express an emotion that you're not actually feeling. So more importantly, how does this affect someone long term? When you can't even name what's happening, you can't even begin the process of analyzing anything. And not only does that affect your mental health, but it decreases your well-being. And if you just think about it, toxic positivity is a block to a concept called mindfulness because you can't just accept what is. What that's doing is stealing some of your cognitive resources so that when you're at work, you don't feel as much energy for things like being creative or just feeling fully present. How else does this show up? How can we recognize it? So toxic positivity in the workplace often goes undetected, tucked away under phrases such as, you know, we're one big family, uh, we're a team, other places are so much worse. 
you should be grateful. It'll all work out in the end. Try harder, you'll get there. And maybe the worst one, there's always a silver lining. You just have to look at it. So considering the average human spends about a third of their life at work, it's unrealistic to spend and expect someone to remain positive 100% of the time. So since this uh, podcast today is really career focused, I want to explain some reasons why toxic positivity is harmful at work. And while, again, I think that motivation, enthusiasm is important in the workplace, this is kind of the border of where it becomes potentially toxic. So number one, you end up ignoring problems instead of solving them. You know, people try to avoid a difficult situation by distorting reality to minimize their own discomfort, since a lot of times it's easier to dismiss problems than to face a difficult conversation and find a solution. But then disregarding people's concerns makes it harder to identify and resolve those problems head on. Number two, another reason, right? It can make you or others feel shame and isolation. So toxic positivity not only prevents people from seeing and solving problems, but it can also make you feel like something's wrong with you. When people are unable to express any criticism or strong emotion, they can enter that shame spiral where they feel bad about what they're feeling and guilty and they just can't seem to stop these feelings by thinking positively. So, in other words, feeling bad about feeling bad can turn into a cycle of stress, and that's very, very hard to bounce back from. Another reason is that it could stifle trust, creativity, and productivity. Google has a project called Project Aristotle, which studied the secret of effective teams. And what that study revealed is that a recurring characteristic of high-performing teams was a sense of, get this, psychological safety among its members. So toxic positivity creates a psychologically unsafe environment because you're unable to bring up concerns because it, you're, you're afraid essentially of being perceived as not a team player or you're introducing negative vibes. And this can all eventually lead to poor decision making as valid concerns can't be raised and addressed appropriately. And finally, and I mentioned this before, but toxic positivity can result in burnout. So I say this because if there's no room to voice the need for change, you're forced then to dismiss your struggles and put your head down and power through those problems. But letting negative feelings pile up, pile up can cause burnout and long-term damage to mental health. So what can we do about it? Instead of solely promoting positive vibes, um, a better option is to meet those negative emotions with something called positive validation. So positive validation accepts a person's feelings as they are, and this acknowledgement leads to acceptance as opposed to that toxic positivity model that leads to rejection. We often forget that negative emotion serves a very important role in problem solving and in feeling whole and human, and we can't go without acknowledging our pain. We just can't. We can't go living you know, in an all or nothing, black or white vacuum. It just doesn't work because it takes away from what is available to us and when we allow ourselves to tap into all of the other emotions along the spectrum. And the best way to illustrate the difference between positive validation and toxic positivity is through an example. So let's just say someone approaches you about a difficult situation they're encountering with a coworker. And if you don't have a job, this can relate to a friendship or at school or a personal relationship. So instead of saying something like, don't worry, it'll all work itself out. Try using that po positive validation phrase and, and actually turn that around by saying, you know, let's acknowledge, right? That sucks. I'm sorry you're going through that. So that positive validation phrase creates space to express and process emotions, which leads to healthier headspace. Toxic positivity, on the other hand, while it's really, you know, oftentimes well-intentioned, it's a behavior that could do more harm than good. Here are some other examples of how to turn, turn it around in a situation that could be relevant to you. So instead of saying, you know, everything happens for a reason, try saying, you know, sometimes life doesn't go as planned. How can I support you through this tough time? Another thing we off, another phrase we often hear is, you know, no excuses. Try this. We all handle situations differently. It's okay if you need to take a break or take a step back. Instead of saying, just don't think about it, try this. 
I'm here to listen. Tell me how you're feeling. This is another frustrating one. Difficult situations only make us stronger. How about this? That sounds hard. I'm thinking of you. And then instead of saying everyone struggles, so try to work harder. Perhaps a good response could be instead, I see that you're stressed. How can I help you? Again, be cognizant of your language and conversations with your coworkers, with your supervisor, and be intentional about how you react and respond to their feelings. Here are some other common signs of toxic positivity in the workplace and some tips on how you may be able to shut it down. So let's be honest, every situation isn't going to be great at work. You know, work is called work for a reason, but there's a difference when you might be masking your real feelings if you're constantly saying, oh, no worries, it's fine. No, really, it's all good. There'll be plenty of times when it's challenging and you're faced with difficult situations. So grinning and bearing it will only leave you stressed and overwhelmed. Shutting this down could include, you know, expressing yourself. And again, there's a fine line between complaining all the time and occasionally acknowledging how you're feeling. If you get it out, whether that's the good, the bad, or the ugly, you're not only doing yourself, you're not doing yourself or anyone else any favors by hiding how you really feel. Another thing you could shut down is just feeling guilty for feeling negative emotions. This goes both ways. So like if a coworker approaches you and expresses how they feel, you don't have to respond by saying, "Ugh, your job is so easy or no one likes a negative Nancy. You may want to validate their feelings. It's best not to tell people how they should or should not feel, especially at work. Validating someone's feelings will signal to them that you're someone they can talk to about their problems and it creates that space to remove any guilt that they're probably already experiencing. Another example, so picture this, you walk out of a presentation, total disaster, you know it, everyone knows it, this could be, you know, at work or a class or, you know, it could be any situation for that matter, but shortly after, just say a coworker or someone says, oh, you know what, that wasn't that bad, I bet other people have bombed way worse than you. Again, while this was probably very well intentioned, these statements sometimes deprive the person of feeling their emotions. And again, minimizing negative experiences prevents us from emoting, which leads to avoidance of feelings. And when we can't express ourselves, it causes stress and leads to situations that might make you feel like you're not good enough, you're not capable of enough. So you may want to combat this type of toxic positivity by dealing it with it head on. I know that sounds hard, but again, you want to acknowledge your failures and shortcomings. The key is to learn from them and move forward. No need to dwell on the negative, but you do need to confront it. And remember, the best way to foster a positive experience in the workplace is to hold space for everyone, including yourself, to freely express themselves. Now, what can workplaces do about this? You know, in in my research, some businesses could ask some key questions like, You know, are people even allowed to challenge or change the culture? Can people express concerns or reservations during meetings? This is a topic that could, you know, go on and on, but organizational psychologists encourage authenticity in everyday workplace interactions to build mutual trust instead of a culture of avoidance. So I'll leave you with that for now. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. To access all of the Career Chat episodes or just simply learn more about this topic and others, you can schedule an appointment with a career counselor or visit our website. Thanks again for tuning in.